So in 2005, Microsoft released the Xbox 360. It gave it a year head start on the PlayStation 3 at the time, but it also cut the original Xbox generation pretty short, and it even got to where we had a revision of the Xbox 360 just a year and a half into its life that brought some pretty significant upgrades in the form of the Xbox 360 Elite. I finally picked one up. It's been like 15 years since the thing came out, but I figured we would take a look at it here today. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new to the Spawnwood channel, make sure you're subscribed down below. So I ended up finding this one for $70. It came complete with the controller, the power cable and all this. This is from 2009. So it's a couple of years after the 360 Elite originally launched, which was back in April of 2007 at a price of $480. It was still below the PlayStation 3 at the time, but just barely. I mean, technically you had the PlayStation 3 20 gigabyte model at $500. That one didn't have Wi-Fi and the hard drive was six times smaller than this one but it was still a way for Microsoft to get HDMI compatibility into their system. Them launching a year earlier than the PS3, it kind of had it to where Microsoft was in this weird position with HDMI not necessarily being fully adopted just yet, and they ended up going with the AV component output. But they weren't gonna go the whole way through the generation without HDMI, so we got this system that I mean, you can see did include an HDMI port and this was like the big driving factor behind it with their marketing and what they were trying to sell it on, but they needed something else so they could call it the Xbox 360 Elite System, which they did. And that came in the form of a 120 gigabyte hard drive at retail. Without this, if you just wanted to buy this, because technically these were uh, able to be just popped right off, drop on a new one, upgrade completely without opening the system, $180. Yeah, it was more than a dollar a gig back then in 2007. I guess there was some convenience factor though. I mean, the fact that the hard drive can be changed out that quickly. And in fact, if the system is on, when you take the drive off or pop it on, it's designed to just reboot completely. So you won't even like really brick your system or anything, removing and uh, and popping back on the hard drive uh, over and over while it's on. Although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but still it was pretty easy for users to upgrade storage on their 360 compared to something that was a bit more involved with the PlayStation 3. We still had our memory card slots here. These would go away when we had that Xbox 360 Slim version come out. And we also had our IR port here. And I actually had the white Xbox 360 model. And then I went from that to the Slim system. So I never technically had an Xbox 360 Elite until now, which is one of the reasons that I'm gonna go through and just clean it up a bit. It, the fact that it appears to have never been opened as the warranty sticker is still here and it's from 2009, it could probably use a good once over. The good news is with this system is it still works completely. I went ahead and just checked it out after I got home with it. And this is from 2009, so it's later on in the, uh, this, technically this version of the Xbox 360 before they went to that slim Xbox 360 combined everything down to a single chip. I did an entire video on how they basically transformed the entire system at that time. Um, but this should be a, I'm thinking this one might be a Jasper Xbox 360 motherboard revision, which technically if you want one that's least likely to red ring on you, this would probably be it. Least likely of this Xbox 360. Honestly, if you're trying to get a 360 now and you just want it to work, you're not necessarily interested in like the, the soft mod or homebrew scene or any of that, I would go with an Xbox, uh, Xbox 360 slim model. So with the warranty sticker that I had to remove here, not surprising to see the X clamps are completely intact here. It looks like no one's worked on the system at all. And just for fun, no other reason than to just kind of show you what's inside. I'll pop the hard drive open. They didn't even put a warranty seal on this. And there you go, we had a metal shield. There's our hard drive plugs in through SATA, runs down through the connector here, then plugged into the Xbox 360. If you were curious, maybe you bought uh, an Xbox 360 Slim and you wanted to take this hard drive and put it in, you can do that. Uh, this is compatible. You'll just have to have some sort of spacer inside the 360 Slim. You can use all kinds of stuff. At one point we didn't have the, uh, the trays that you can order secondhand off of like Amazon that you could put these in and technically convert it 
to a 360 slim hard drive. So we would just wrap it in foam or something just to give it some space inside of that compartment. But it'll find it like a normal Xbox 360 hard drive. So if you're having a hard time finding a, a cable to transfer it over or anything, you can just disassemble it and drop it in. Anyway, back to the system. I have a bunch of torque screws I have to take out, but after looking at that hard drive, it was a pretty substantial upgrade from what we had at the time, which was a 20 gigabyte hard drive. And Microsoft, I, I feel like, had this in mind as they were working towards the following E3. Because in 2008 at that show, they announced a new uh, dashboard update, which was, I didn't even realize this, but at the time, that's like the first real big software update that completely changed a game console's layout. Like, I mean, the entire UI just shifted. We were dealing with that blade system, which I, I think we look back on with heavy nostalgia, but it did have less features and less ability than the UI they released because along with that, they very quietly mentioned that you could install your Xbox 360 games, which people were trying to wrap their heads around that because it, it sounded kind of like you'd be able to install a game and then that was it, you didn't need the disc anymore. Eventually some footage leaked out showing that was not the case, but it was still a really cool idea considering you would be able to lessen kind of the wear and tear on your disc drive by just installing your game to your larger hard drive, that 120 gigabyte drive. And load times will be faster, your system will be quieter because this drive would get pretty loud. And it was overall a really nice like, early generation feature that they added all through a software update you would get through the internet. That was actually a pretty good E3 overall from Microsoft. They announced a bunch of games. They had like Resident Evil 5, Fable 2, Gears 2, Fallout 3, and then they had this big push for JRPGs like Infinite Undiscovery, Star Ocean, and they even closed out with Final Fantasy 13. By the way, the person on stage that day for Microsoft presenting all of this stuff, the big push for the Xbox 360, it was Don Matrick. Also, we eventually got to a point where some games just had to install. They just came with like mandatory install discs. I think Grand Theft Auto V, you had to install to the Xbox 360. I remember that was a whole thing. All right, moment of truth. It looks good. This is a very, very clean Xbox 360 for not being open at all. We have the nice large cooler here for the CPU. They went through a couple revisions even for the internal cooling. This is one of the better ones here. Uh, I think the, the GPU though has like the smaller aluminum finned heat sink. Sometimes you would have an extra piece that came up around here and that's generally the one that people prefer just because it has just more cooling surface area overall. You know, back then people made the X clamps out to be like almost pure evil when really it just came down to the board itself not being manufactured well early in the 360's life. The X clamps were actually not a terrible idea for what Microsoft was trying to get them to do, which was more or less be able to bend and flex with the board that was expected to bend and flex. It was, again, not the greatest idea at the time to make this board so flimsy, but you gotta keep in mind, the X clamps were still used in the Xbox One, like the large VCR model. So they weren't inherently the big problem with the system. And back then, we were always trying to replace them with screws and washers. While I'm cleaning this up, we can take a quick look around the, the board here. We have our RAM module around the GPU. They also had spots on the back where they could put RAM, and that was just based on the board configuration they had with the GPU. Had our south bridge up here, I already pointed out GPU, CPU. And then we had this chip right here. This was the HANA or ANA chip, and it became like uh, became an important part when it came to the repairing cycle or diagnosis because there were like different error codes that would pop up that was related to this chip and it would be like E74, that was a big one, where you'd have like one red light, and sometimes we would test by just pushing down on this, and I'm not even kidding, while we were trying to post it, and if it would post while we are pressing down on this chip in particular, we would start looking around at this one, but unfortunately E74 was very general and could mean the GPU or this chip up here, so, while this was a better board, I'll say, because they started moving the fabrication to like 65 nanometers, they did also have uh, its own problems introduced. Okay, our chips look 
pretty good. Some of the compound will stick at times. This was actually pretty easy to remove. It wasn't like dried out or seized on too bad. If you have any components like these two little guys up here that had some compound around it, something like, or just stuff that's kind of sticking, something like a, a, like a plastic spudger that you can use just to slowly scrape it off and be really careful. That'll work. It also works pretty well on scraping off the heat sinks here. And we have the classic MX4 thermal compound. There we go. And then we'll just drop our heat sinks on, reconnect and press down our X clamps, and we're good to reinstall it. And at this point, I just need to put it together and we can test it with a game. This drive kicks right out, standing up, good news. Got a classic here that we're gonna take a look at. Huh? Metal Gear Solid HD Collection, which, uh, hey, this is more valuable than ever now since Konami pulled like all of these games off of the storefront. It's still backwards compatible, by the way, with the Xbox series. So, hey, you pick it up on the Xbox 360, you can start playing it right now on your new, on the newest system. But we'll drop disc one in, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and install it as well. Take advantage of the, the big feature that the 120 gigabyte hard drive ended up being useful for. So the way it'd work, you would hover over the game, you would press X, and it'll take you to play now or install. So we'll hit install and it just sits here with a bar that fills up and it can take a, a bit of time. I, I feel like it was usually like 10 or 15 minutes depending on how big the game was. But once you install it, it's a one-time thing. You just need to make sure the game is in the system when you're playing it so it can just check to make sure you own it. But otherwise, the disc won't really spin up much at all while you're playing. It's funny to think about now because it, it's such a regular thing where you install the game from the disc and it's mandatory or you download a game and it'll install that way but at the time when they announced this for the 360 it was a pretty big deal all right there we go it is fully installed so it took a bit over 10 minutes to install and when it finished installing it the the sound for the drive wound down and then i'm going back into the game now and the disc drive spins back up so I'm curious if it'll actually spin back down as we're checking this game out. By the way, this is one of the few games that Bluepoint did away from Sony. They did this and they also did Titanfall on the Xbox 360. But I think for the most part, they did a pretty good job with the Metal Gear Solid HD collection on the Xbox 360. I think the worst version of this collection was on the Vita. Yeah, it, it wasn't great there. Which, funny enough, that's also the most expensive one because it's the Vita. So the opening part for Metal Gear Solid 2 on the plant level, you can pick like, you wanna go tanker, plant, or both. I jumped to plant and of course it's pretty dark overall on the monitor so I can't really see it too well from here, but I noticed that as we went through the opening cinematic and stuff, the disk drive just completely spun down. So it's pretty quiet because the disk drive isn't spinning at like full blast anymore. You just, some of the fan action here. Uh, but that's just one of the benefits of installing your games for the most part is the disk drive didn't have to go full blast like the entire time. And you just ended up with uh, a much better gaming experience. I'd say if you remember with the Xbox 360, some of them got really loud like it sounded like your system was trying to take off into orbit but overall i'm pretty happy with the xbox 360 elite that i ended up with here i got pretty fortunate with the condition that it was in internally and i didn't have to do a lot mostly just so a little bit of cleanup here and there and changing out the compound but i didn't really have a 360 elite when it was current going from the regular 360 like the white model up to that slim when it released uh, however, I I'd still liked this form factor of the Xbox 360, which probably comes from quite a bit of nostalgia back then. But let me know what you guys think about the 360 Elite, especially if you were someone who maybe upgraded from the standard one to the Elite, or you picked it up because it finally got that HDMI port on the back. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.